In today's video, we're talking about five mistakes that you will make when getting into 3D printing. Let's get started. Welcome back to another 3D Printing 101 here on Makers Muse, guys. So what do I mean by mistakes that people will make? Well, with 3D printing, there's a lot that can go wrong when you're first getting into it. And I'm talking about FDM 3D printing, not the uh, resin-based systems that are becoming a bit more popular now for hobbyists. And these are mistakes that I have personally made many times in the past. So it's my hope with this video that I can share, that, share these mistakes with you so you can avoid actually making them yourself. Anyway, let's get started. Mistake number one, incorrect bed level or nozzle height. This is massive. I've got an entire series of videos, one on correct first layer and one on bed leveling, but basically your first layer of your 3D print is the most critical. If this is not correct, if it's too far, too close, not level, then your print will fail either straight away or hours into the process. So this is one of the first things that newcomers to 3D printing actually miss. They're really keen to get into it and they'll rush into 3D printing, especially on machines that have manually leveled systems like the popular Aldi printer that just was uh, released again this year. You know, that machine has four springs, one in each corner, and you manually level that bed. So if you don't spend a lot of time getting that accurate first off, you're gonna end up with lots of prints that fail and it may be really frustrating not knowing exactly why that's happening well, it all comes down to your correct bed level and nozzle height. So that's number one. Number two, using the wrong settings. So this is something I've done many times in the past. I've used my 3D printing slicer. I've sliced a file, sent it to the printer, and then wondered why is the plastic warping or why does it look so crap? Well, I've used the wrong material settings in my slicer. I've used the wrong settings and you might think, yeah, that, that doesn't sound like something I'd do. It's actually easier to make this mistake than you think. It's just one number that you can change and that makes all the difference to your printing quality. For example, you might be running multiple materials. You see behind me, I have a whole plethora, a plethora of materials behind me of different types. For example, this is Polyalchemy Elixir PLA. It's a PLA plastic, but it prints at a higher temperature than other brands of PLA. So using the right settings is absolutely critical in getting a good print off your machine. And it's one of the first mistakes people will make is they'll use the wrong settings. And always spend that little bit of extra time in the slicing stage to double check your, your actual uh, parameters before you go ahead and send the G code and wonder why your print doesn't work. Mistake number three, tangled filament. I'm sorry to break this to you guys, but if you're getting tangled filament, it's not the manufacturer's fault. It's probably something you've done. Generally, when filaments manufactured and spooled onto rolls, it can't physically get tangled. It's something that happens when you open up the box. And to demonstrate and make polyalchemy very sad, because it's the closest spool, this is how you should store filament. You should have it looped around one of the holes in the side of the, in the, side of the spool and stored like this. Do not store it like this, because what can happen extremely easily is that this loose end can dive under another one. And you can roll it up and it might look like it's fine. It might look like the spool has no tangles until several hours into the print and you notice that it's catching or worst case, you don't even see it catch. It jams, the whole spool gets pulled towards the extruder and the filament stops extruding and your print fails. Tangled filament is a real pain, especially if you're swapping colors quite often in a print uh, production studio environment. So if you do have a tangle or suspect you have a tangle, my advice is to pull off as much filament as you can like this. It usually helps to have a friend as well to uh, help pull the spool, the, the spool filament away from you. And then you basically want to wind it on in a way that it doesn't tangle. Now filament will kind of want to start wrapping around itself like it's doing on the floor there. So always give it a chance to spin and um, see the end spinning here. And then by unrolling as much as you can to make sure there's no tangle, you're gonna ensure that it won't be a tangle during your actual print. I actually have a really great video of the sounds of 3D printing failure, if you wanna check that out, which also has the sound of a tangled roll of filament. If you wanna get used to that audio cue to know if your 3D printer is suffering from it, I do warn you it's a painful video to watch, but you can click the card here and check it out. Mistake number four, not using support materials 
where they are needed. Avoiding support material is totally fine for lots of 3D printing and lots of designs out there for 3D printing have been designed to not need support material. But on the other hand, a lot of them do and it's very easy to commit a file to printing that will fail catastrophically because you did not put support materials in. The softwares these days, some of them are getting better, but a lot of them will not give you any sort of visual feedback as to the fact you need support materials. It comes down to just trial and error and personal experience. One of the files I like to print quite often is the Gaia Anderson Cat, which has a very nice overhang where the head is. And if you do not put support material in, the print will look perfect until the last uh, last 10, 15 minutes or so, in which case it will start trying to print the head and then the cat will end up like an abomination. So avoiding support materials is fine, but always keep in mind that you should check to see if you need it by using the G-code preview if available in your slicer, because sometimes allowing for support material can mean the difference between a print surviving and succeeding or failing horribly. And finally, mistake number five. This one sums up all of the others not monitoring a 3D printer. I need to say this, 3D printers, whether they're the cheapest kit on the market all the way up to extremely high-end machines, can fail. And they can fail quickly within the first few minutes or they can fail towards the end. But it's really important to always keep an eye on your 3D printer. Check it every 15 minutes or so. What I tend to do is I send a print and I watch it lay down the first layer and then I'll come back maybe 10, 15 minutes later to make sure it hasn't pulled off that layer and then I'll come back maybe every hour or two hours after that. Because usually once that first layer is stuck down, like I said, you're good. But I worked in a print studio and I had way too many people come in because they committed a print and then something went wrong straight away. So they had a printer running for 20 hours or so making a ball of plastic that just covered the nozzle and extruder assembly and just made the whole printer destroyed because they didn't monitor their 3D printer. Also on a safety aspect, guys, monitoring a 3D printer is important because a lot of machines on the market now have a bit of an issue with connectors failing and can, some of them can have a fire risk aspect to them as well. So it's really important to monitor printers in case something goes wrong um, and you can be there to actually stop it. Also filament, uh, this is just a bit of a bonus uh, mistake, but keeping track of if you have enough filament in the machine, some machines do have filament feedback systems now, but a lot of them don't. So making sure your machine's not just about to run out of filament with five hours left is also an another good reason to make sure you go and check your printer. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed these five 3D printing mistakes that people make and hopefully by discussing them with you, you won't make them in future. As I said, I've made all of these and more before. And also this is a good opportunity to mention our new ebook, our 50 3D printing tips and tricks because I used to work in this industry full time and I have picked up many little knickknacks and tips and tricks that can help keep 3D printers running. And we just released that last week. It's been quite popular and you can check the card out here to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse, guys, want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews and more 3D printing 101, I would love you to subscribe. It means quite a lot to me. So thanks for watching, guys, and happy printing. Bye.